Hello folks and welcome back to Wonder of Watches. Do you remember there a while ago I put this strap coat on this watch on camera? There were spring bars flying everywhere. It was a bit of all a bit of a mess. Well now I'm going to try and do it again. But this time I'm going to try and talk about the releases coming up at Watches and Wonders for Rolex as well. Now most men can't multitask. I definitely can't. So this is going to be a bit of a fiasco I imagine. So what I'm doing is I'm unboxing uh, a Forstner Jubilee. So this one is the strap code Jubilee now. I just, I absolutely love this. It's really, really comfortable. I haven't been wearing it a whole lot. People know that I think. Um, it hasn't been on wrist an awful lot, but I bought a new tool because it's difficult to get this one on. The tolerances on the lugs are just so tight. It was difficult to get it in, but I bought this thing and that has helped. So I've been wearing this for the last few days and I find it very, very comfortable. My issue with it is it is extremely comfortable and I do recommend it. I have to say uh, one of the most comfortable bracelets I've had. Um, the issue with it is, well, the links are big. It's a, I think it's a Super Angus Jubilee, and that's causing these big fat links. But also, you got these kind of bunny tooth here, this this male end link where this part of the Jubilee juts out. It, it extends the the overall uh, lug to lug of the watch, and they just look a bit odd. I think they jut out there too much. So I went for something else. I went for something with a female end link. This video could take a while, but look, we'll bear with it. I'll speed it up. We'll do all the things to try and make it somewhat presentable. I'll leave the watch up there, something to look at. Okay, so I went to the Forstner website. I actually went on to get a bracelet for the Speedy. Um, I thought I might try and preserve the Speedy because I do a lot of office work. So it's that banging the clasp off the, off the desk is the problem. But you know, as it turned out, I thought, well, I'll just stick with the the bracelet that's on it at the moment. I ended up buying one from Forstner for this watch. And it's a Jubilee for the Black Bay 58. So yeah, nice packaging, nice packaging. I think this flips out here. And here we go, loads of stickers, sticker to death. It's a nice little pack though, right? Look, if, if it gets laborious and it tastes too long, this has all happened before. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself again. It's kind of nice, isn't it? That they give you that tool for adjusting the bracelet. You know what? I might actually just put it on the watch and a couple of spring bars there. Yeah, we'll use those two. And here's the end links. This is the major difference, you see. These are female end links. So they articulate, they don't take up, they don't extend that kind of lug to lug or wingspan of the watch. They keep it within the lug distance. That's the difference. The end link here, it's a male end link. This one is a female end link and just should just keep things a bit more svelte. I think it will suit the watch. It's quite light as well, actually. So all good things so far. So let's, I think, begin by taking the Jubilee off and we can talk about maybe watches and wonders. Rolex, what's happening with Rolex? Yesterday we spoke about Tudor. Now everything I'm about to say, I watched on the Tim Mosso live stream yesterday. So none of this is my own thought, none of it. And I'm not gonna pretend like a lot of YouTubers do that there's some sort of mystic meg when it comes to Rolex, because none of them are. They wait for the teasers and there's a lot of speculation. There's always the same speculation that the Air King and the Milgaus is gonna be uh, Discontinued. I think that comes up every year, doesn't it? I'm not a massive Rolex aficionado, I gotta say. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who know an awful lot more about Rolex than I do. But those rumors, they come up time and time again. But Tim Mosso is an expert. He's an expert on most things. He's the man, right? So he has, uh, well, he's dissected the teaser. He's, what do you call it, reverse engineered the teaser that's on the Rolex website. Be prepared, I think, is the is the thing that it says. Uh, be prepared, it's like Scout's motto. Where have you heard that before? Scout's motto. So I'm assuming then we're going to see tool watches uh, as the predominant releases from Rolex this year, which is pretty cool. Uh, right, let's just start by taking this off. Okay, as I've always advised when you're doing this, you should really uh, separate the bracelet at the clasp first. It just and lay it flat just makes it a whole lot easier. So here, at this point here, we want to separate that off. Now I took out a little tool here. Oh boy, this is going to be a mess. I feel it already. And boom, boom. Just like that. 
blow your minds. And we will keep that sprinkler safe. I say that. Variably, I'm going to lose it. And we lay it down flat. Sapphire crystal, it's not going to scratch, but you will pop it on the old. So anyway, Rolex, yes, Yacht Masters seems to be the order of the day. Now, I love the Yacht Master, I have to say. I've seen uh, Ushin's Rhodium one. I think that's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to have to just get in and have a look at this. Uh, fingers crossed. I'm standing already, look. I'm getting nervous now. If we can just get some sort of purchase on that. Boom. One. Done. So, uh, what was I saying? <clears throat> yeah, I love the Yacht Master Rhodium. It's cool. I thought it was my favourite Yacht Master until I saw the blue dial in the flesh with the red hands. It's uh, it's cool. Uh, Yacht Master is like a Submariner, but like a really, really classy Submariner. Look at this thing. This thing is magic. Did you see that? I've been tearing my hair out already. This was the one I used the last time, the Burgeon. But sure, these things, when you use them, you know, they deteriorate in terms of usability the more you use them. I brought this one down as well, so I'm trying to keep all options covered. So, original bracelet off. So now we're on to the Forstner. Okay, yeah, I've still got the sticker on the back, look. Not that it matters, because I absolutely destroyed my lugs. <laughs> Trying to get this trap going on. Look at that. I know people would turn in their grave seeing that. Sure, look, it is what it is. It's a tool watch. Getting back then to Rolex releases. Um... So, uh, Tim reckons we're going to see Yacht Masters. So that's great. Where, where's my... Here's my two end links. We're going to see Yacht... Yeah, look, this is definitely... It's not as chunky. I like the clasp there. It's not as chunky. Like, look at the difference, right? So you're going to see this. Because I know people are going to... They're going to be... Uh, they're going to be wondering, you know, which one to get. There's the strap code. There's the two side by side, like, just look at how more svelte the Forstner is. So that's the difference. It feels a lot lighter. The taper is probably a little bit more. And then we have the clasp. So I'll do the screw things maybe afterwards. Uh, which way will this be on my wrist now? And wait, this way, is that the way it goes? Sorry, I'm just gonna pop this. Oh, look, yeah, uh, yeah, that way, that way, that way. All right, so this part at 12, this part at six. Um, I really like the feel of this, I gotta say. It's lighter than the strap code. It's more articulate than the strap code because the links are smaller. They're thinner and they're more svelte. What is on my hands? What the hell is going on there? Oh, I think I know. Oh, I do know. Yeah, I use marker to try and hide my address from the viewer. Well, well, we're only 10 minutes in, we've got the strap off, we've got the new strap. Um, on stickers, I don't like when they put too many stickers on. I really don't. Now, I just want to... So, Tim thinks <clears throat> we're going to see a precious metal yacht master. Well, he knows we are, really, because... The three dots that they put on the crown, they signify stuff. I didn't know any of this now, but there's a code behind that. And the three means it's a triple lock crown, triple lock crown. I don't know what that means. Um, because one of the dots on the crown is bigger than the other two, it signifies it's precious, precious metal. Now there is a white gold uh, Yacht Master, which I love, but it's 42 mil and that's just too big like. For my dainty wrists, it's too big. That's why I wear a 38 mil uh, black bay. Now, let's separate this at the clasp again. I would love that white gold in, let me get this right again. This bit at 12, this bit at six, right? Am I right? Man, I don't know if I am right. Would it be like that? 
it will go on like that go on like that no that's not right that's the way you would pop it on sorry guys if you're wondering what i'm doing i'm just deliberating which side needs to go on which and i think it's that way which means this link goes at the 12 o'clock position the 12 o'clock position okay 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 yeah we have one two three four five six seven two three four five six seven and all three car cliche shocked micro adjustments it's a lot isn't it it's good come on Come on, you got this, got this. Okay. I'm gonna put this at 12 with an end link. How does this, oh, hold on now. We'll just leave that out there for the moment. <clears throat> so precious metal yacht master, maybe 42, maybe 42. Um, yeah, too big. Too big for me. Wish they made that in 40. Uh, he also thinks there might be a bracelet on a regular yacht master. But look, one thing is for sure: the yacht master range is going to be. That's where we're going to see some new additions. Uh, so that's fine. Um, then the rest of the teaser vid alludes to the sky. So we're going to see some pilots' watches. I think we might see a new Air King. That would be pretty cool. Um, I'm not a fan of the Air King as it is. I don't like all the fives. It just looks a bit odd to me. I mean, it's just not something that I pick over the Explorer. But then you see, I'm, I I love the Explorer. It's my favorite Rolex. So I'm, you know, is it a bit crass to hope that the Air King looks more like the Explorer, like the the Air King of old, with just three six and nine, and then uh, baton indices? I mean, a bit boring, but that's what I'd like to see. So there's a lot of speculation that we're going to see a new Air King. And maybe it will go back to that historical Air King. Okay, so the links here, you need to go from the top here, folks. That's how I would do it. And probably end up scratching my, so I'm standing again here now. I'm going to do this outside of the camera and we'll just go from... Are we in? No, couldn't be. One of them is. One of them is. <clears throat> Let me see if we can locate it. It must be down here somewhere. Come on, don't pop out now. Don't pop out. Uh, where's my little spring bar tool? It just needs to find the position now we're golden. Come on, baby. Is it over here? It's up because it's very close to the bottom of the boom okay good it's good good We're doing this a lot quicker than we did the last time um so a new air king possibly a gmt without getting into the details again he tore apart the the teaser vid so here's the other spring bar tool he tore apart the teaser vid and he came up with this theory that we're going to see a GMT. Now, you would expect that to be a GMT master too, right? Because that's what all the other rumors are saying. And it could be back to... This thing is amazing, this tweezers, look at that. This is painless relatively, compared to the last time. I nearly took my eyeball out with a spring bar. Come on now, it's up here somewhere. It's up here somewhere. I know you can do this. It must be at that mark there, look. 
we're in we are in okay so now it's just a case of putting this back on are we going to get this done in under 15 no we're just over 15 minutes so yacht masters <clears throat> gmt master one Tim even thinks it might be a GMT, sorry, GMT Master 2, I think, for sure. I'm just going to pick one randomly here now. We're going to the third one. Where are we? There we go. Well, Tim actually thinks it might be a GMT Master 1. Now, I don't know much about a GMT. I don't believe it has a GMT hand. Is that what the case is? Or it's not independently maneuverable guys we got that on that was painless and I have it on the right way and I have it on the right way and there it is it's good it's good what do you guys think 16 minutes not bad not bad looks okay on my wrist uh, let's take it off again I have the clasp on the right way I think Tons of micro adjustments. So, yeah, I would say the fitment of the end links is not quite as good as the strap code. Not quite as flush. But I do prefer that there... You see this this here? It's like a Rolex there that the, the bottom of the end link comes short of the bottom of the lug. I love that, I have to say. And it means you benefit then from this full articulation. And if you remember looking at the strap code initially with those bunny teeth, you don't have that. You don't have that opportunity there. So here we get full articulation. Now, some people just don't like the Black Bay on a Jubilee. It's different. It's very different to the strap code. It's um, The strap code made the watch look bigger and everything. And it is extremely comfortable. This feels extremely comfortable as well. This feels extremely comfortable as well. And that's the clasp. What do you think of the clasp? It's quite nice, isn't it? Brushed down the center, polished. Okay. So I think that's a success. I think that's a success. Let me know what you think. I'll update, I think, we'll... we'll I won't do this, the screws on the links because that gets a bit fiddly and it's a little bit time consuming, even with the screws. People get out, give, give out about Seiko uh, pushing... Um, the pin and collar system, I actually always liked it. I always like it. Depends on the size of the screws as well. They did they give us a, a little a wee pin screwdriver there. No. But um how good is it? One. If the screw heads are too small, you end up cutting your hand up and everything. It's a bit of a nightmare. So hopefully it will go easy. But anyway, look, I'll leave you guys for the moment. Uh there it is. Um, for anybody curious to see how the strap code and the Forstner compare, you can see it's, it's a very much a, a more chunkier, bigger, and robust bracelet. There's a lot of metal in the strap code, you know. This one feels a lot lighter, almost like. Um, Hesitate to use the term jingly jangly. We're over that, but it, it does feel more like a a jubilee from the 70s or the 80s, I guess. Uh, but the endings are really, really cool. Very cool. So let me know what you think. I'm going to put up uh, uh, two photos side by side and um, Rolex discussion. I think we finished that, haven't we? Uh, Yacht Master, Air King, GMT Master 2. Um, People talking about a turnograph. I love the turnograph. Uh, there hasn't been a turnograph, I don't think, since since maybe um, the early 2010s. 2013, I think I heard it was discontinued. But uh, I, I do love it, I have to say. Whether they're going to rehash that, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but I might be right, I might be wrong. Who knows? We'll find out tomorrow. Uh, I am doing a live stream again with Elton again. And uh, our good friend uh, Tom Burnett will join us on that. Um, we'll do it on the 31st. We'll wait for the dust to settle so we know what we're talking about. And then we'll do a live stream 
on Rolex new releases because that's what's got everybody excited or what every what everybody gets excited about year in year out. Personally, I'm more excited about the tutors, but uh, maybe that's because I can only afford tutors, <laughs> or because that's what it is is available, uh, or 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 maybe it's it's something else. But whatever. Talk to you in the next one.